We are asked to graph the function f of x is equal to negative 3x squared plus 8. So we'll do this by essentially trying out different points for x and seeing what we get for f of x and then graphing it. But the first question I have for you is just looking at this function definition for f of x. What do you think this type, what type of graph will this be? Will this be a line? Will this be a parabola? Will this be something else, a circle, something else, maybe something else bizarre or strange? Well, this is pretty clearly going to be a parabola here. You have a, the function is defined, it's negative three x squared. So you have this second degree term here. You don't have any x thirds or x to the fourths or anything else bizarre, so you, this is going to be a parabola. Now the other thing that we could think about is whether the parabola is going to open up like that or whether it's going to open down like that. And just looking at this function definition, do you have any intuition of whether it's going to open up or it's going to open down? Well, if you look at the coefficient on the x squared term, the negative three, that tells you that this parabola is going to open down. It's going to open down. So with that intuition now that we, we know it's going to be a parabola, we know it's going to open down, let's actually try to graph the thing. And let's, let me draw some axes here. So let's say that this is my x-axis. So that's my x-axis. And then let's make this right over here. This is my y-axis, my y-axis. And let me make a table of values and see what f of x, what values f of x takes on. So on one column, I'm going to do my values for x. And over on the right, I'm going to do my values for f of x. And then we can plot these things. And actually, I want to take all of these values before I draw the scale on these axes so I know what, what might be an appropriate scale. So I'm just going to try a bunch of values. So let's try first what happens when x is equal to negative 2. So when x is equal to negative 2, and I'm just picking numbers that will be relatively easy to compute. When x is equal to negative 2, what's f of x? Well, f of x is going to be negative 3, this negative 3, times negative 2 squared, times negative 2 squared plus 8, which is going to be equal to, let's see, negative 2 squared is 4, positive 4, but then we multiply that times a negative 3, which gives us negative 12 plus 8, gives us negative four. Let's try another point. Let's see what happens when x is equal to negative one. What do we get for f of x then? Well, f of x is going to be negative three times negative one squared plus eight. So that's going to be, see negative one squared is just one, so you're in, and then that times negative three is negative three. Negative three plus eight is five. Now what does f of x equal when x is equal to zero? Well, this is pretty easy to compute. When x is equal to zero, you get negative three times zero squared. Negative three times zero squared, which is equal to, and we could write that either way, negative three times zero squared plus eight. Well, this just simplifies to zero, and so you are just left with eight. Now let's see what happens when x is equal to one. What do we get for f of x? Well, it's going to be negative three times one squared plus eight. So one squared is just one, negative three plus eight is equal to five. And then finally, what do we get when x is equal to positive two? What is f of x equal? Or another way of thinking about it, what is f of two? Well. Let's think about it. You get negative three times two squared plus eight. Two squared is four times negative three is negative 12 plus eight is equal to negative four. So let's see if we can plot this. So are the x values that I picked go from negative two to positive two. So let's make this negative two, negative one. This is zero, this is positive one, and then that could be positive two. And then our, our f of x values are, or we could, we're essentially graphing y is equal to f of x. So I can even say this is going to be the graph of y is equal to f of x. Or f of x values take on things between negative four and positive eight. So let me try to draw that. So if this is positive eight, that's positive eight. That is positive four. And this is negative four. 
this is negative four. And if that's positive four, then this is positive six. And then that right there is five, that is seven. This would be two, that would be three, and then that would be one. Now let's graph the points. When x is negative two, f of x is negative four. And actually, actually look, I could say this is the y is equal to f of x axis. So I'm gonna plot f of x. I'm gra graphing, and this is going to be the graph of y is equal to this function. So let's, let's graph negative two, negative four. So that gets us, when x is negative two, f of x is negative four. So it's right over there. When x is equal to negative one, f of x is equal to five f of x is equal to five. And we're saying that y is equal to f of x in this, in this context. When x is zero, f of x, or y, look, I could even write over here, I could say y is equal to f of x. When x is equal to zero, our f of x is eight. x is zero, f of x is eight. When x is one, f of x is five. When x is one, y equals f of x is five. And then finally, when x is equal to two, f of x is equal to negative four. So two, negative four gets us right there. And now we can connect the dots. We know this is going to be a parabola, and I will do it in blue. So my best attempt, I like to draw it as a dotted line, just because it's easier to not mess up. So it would look something like that. And it keeps on going just like that, and then I can actually make the line a little bit a little bit more solid. So we see that we definitely got a parabola, and just as, just as our intuition told us, or our ability to inspect the coefficient on the x squared term told us, that our parabola is indeed opening, is indeed opening downwards.